Hey guys, back again with another YouTube video. Got a kind of a request off of a, a fellow member off of a Facebook reloading group, Lee Precision Reloading and, and Bullet Casting group. Great group, good group of guys, uh, a lot of knowledge there. So I posted up a picture of a casting pot that I got used and refurbished and hooked up a PID controller to it. So he was asking where I got my, my plans from and how I did it. So this is the, the quick, quick easy version of how to wire up a PID controller to your casting pot. So years ago, I did my first pot, which is that guy right there. Made a PID controller for it. This little guy I had it under here. And had to do some research. A lot of guys using professional electrician garble that I couldn't understand and ohms and resistance and this and that and the other thing. So I had to dumb it down for, for us non-electricians. So this is the quick easy cut and dry version. So I did some research with your commercial plugs, uh, if you have your positive, your negative, and your ground, what colors are those when it comes out of the back of the cord? So real easy and quickly. So your black is hot, your white is not, and your green is your ground. So black is positive, white is negative, green is ground. And that corresponds to these plugs. So if you remember that, your positive is your black, your negative is your white, your green is your ground. You hook that up accordingly, you plug this into the wall, everything's going to be fine. Unless the manufacturer got the plug backwards. Not my fault. Uh, so I'm a visual guy, so I'm going to do a lot of here's the diagram, here's the component type of stuff, just so that way you guys can see, see both. So you plug this into the wall, here's your cord, positive and your negative, and your ground. So the green cord is your ground, and that gets grounded to your case which you can see back here. So this guy's grounded to the case. This is the one that goes out. Uh, positive and negative, they come into this little splitter right here. Uh, so positive and negative. And then I put the other positive next to this one, so that's different on this drawing. So your positive comes into here. What I need to mention is you can see that you have a wire coming off of this wire up to your solid state relay that is in actuality different. I didn't want to have to draw two lines off of here. So that's jumpered off of this post right here. So you have one positive that comes to your switch, which is here. It goes out to your PID controller. The other positive, which is this one, is actually jumpered off of the same terminal and comes up to your solid state relay, which is your constant power, which is T1 or position 2. So some reference on this, initially when I looked up schematics and how to do this, this 1, 2, 3, 4, which is actually on the solid state relay, was never referenced. These positions were referenced L1, T1, A1, and A2. So I had to do a lot of research to figure all of that out. Um, so positive comes to switch, this is the PID controller itself, which is right here. I did not put the positions on the PID controller because every PID controller is different. Um, so for this one, terminals 1 and 2 were positive and negative, and it doesn't even list what is positive and what is negative, so I just had to figure it out. I guessed, first try, got it. So position 1 is positive, position 2 is negative. So what you'll see is after I'm done using this one, I don't have black and white wires, so I used red and black. So once it leaves this cord, the red is positive and the black is negative. So hot and cold. Uh, so positive in, negative in. So those two guys right there. And then your PID controller should have markings or on the schematic somewhere for solid state relay, positive and negative out, which is right here. So your solid state relay out comes up here to position three or A1 on your solid state relay, which is this guy right here. So you can see this one comes up and hooks around to that position right there. Your negative comes out to position four or A2, which is this guy, position four, A2. Black wire comes up and hooks in right there. Uh, and then again, back from the beginning, your positive, your constant is position two, T1. 
position 2, T1, which is right up here in this corner, and then position 1, or L1, comes back down here to this distribution block. So, in actuality, that is this one right here. So this red wire hooks up to this position on the solid state relay, and then this goes to the casting pot. So, what you see here, this is the core that goes to the casting pot, which is this guy right here. So, uh, green is ground, ground it to the case. So, ground to case, which is right here, across from this one. And then on the other side, uh, once this goes into the pot, on the back side of this pot, you have one pole here and one pole here that this gets hooked onto. It doesn't matter which one you put positive and negative onto. It doesn't matter because it's just a heating coil. It just grounds and that's what creates the heat. So you don't have to follow these poles. Um, you can put positive here, negative there, it doesn't matter. And then there's two screws that right here, there's one and then there's a second one down there that just kind of hold this to the pot. So I put the ground onto one of those screws into the pot. That way we've got a, a good ground on our system. Um, so yeah, positive and negative come up, go into the pot, you just take these screws off right here, you lift this up, you take the wires, disconnect them off of this temperature controller, and you just get rid of the wires, you don't need them anymore. Uh, I left this in place just so there's not a hole. Looks good, looks like original equipment type of deal, but this actually has no function, it's dead, there's nothing going to this. Um, so that goes into here. Uh, so other things of note that we need to look at is your thermocouple. You need a K-type. So this PID unit did not come with a K-type thermocouple, it came with a J-type. And J-type doesn't go high enough for lead casting, so you need a K-type, which goes up, I think, to 1,000 degrees Celsius, which will more than cover lead casting. Uh, so get yourself a, a K-type thermocouple. Heat sink, um, you can get them if you get the used power supplies. Some of them come with heat sinks still on them. I got this one off of a website years ago when I did my initial uh, PID build. Uh, ended up going with a different one, and I had this one left over, so I went ahead and used that one. Uh, I pulled this one out of a different old computer, and really anything will work. So if you got a bigger metal aluminum plate or something that you can attach to the back of the solid state relay, just to pull the heat away and allow it to dissipate, that'll work. Um, so I mounted that heat sink onto the back of that. So if you can't find a used one or you can't find one to fabricate to make a heat sink, uh, that might cost you two, three, five bucks to get a heat sink. If you go to a, a store or a, a small business that rebuilds computers, I guarantee you they're going to have a stack of burnout power supplies sitting in the back and they'll probably sell you one for cheap. And more than likely it's going to come with a heat sink in it. Uh, heat shrink, the black tubing that you can put around the wire, uh, blow hot air onto it using a heat gun, and it shrinks down, and it's got hot glue in it. I used the heat shrink to connect these two poles on the back, so I soldered it onto the post, put heat shrink over it, uh, just to make sure that those don't wiggle off of there. Soldering iron and some solder um, really helps when connecting it to your switch poles, uh, so that way they don't wiggle or uh, become disconnected or, or short out on you and miscellaneous electrical connectors so you can see I use these little eye loop guys to connect connect them here and uh, other than that I got the case that you see here was a used computer power supply case uh, I actually found these at Habitat for Humanity and they were a dollar a piece and it came with the Electrical components, electrical boards still in it. Uh, I got a cool little DC fan uh, that actually still works. And some plugs and some plug-ins. So that just slides on there. And then these four screws go into the side there and, and hold the unit together. So it's not pretty. It doesn't look all super cool and and whatnot with the guys that use the, the hobby boxes. But those things run 10 to $20 a piece. And I'm doing this on the cheap. Um... So with this one, I use the Burmy Rex C100. Uh, this PID unit does not transfer to Fahrenheit, so this does Celsius only. So you're going to have to get on Google and do the, the Celsius conversion yourself. 
uh, their first one I built, which is this one, which is the XMT7100. Uh, when I got this one, it was like 10 bucks, and now they're $20. Uh, this one does shift over to Fahrenheit. This one displays your uh, point value, which is the actual temperature, and this one is your set value. So this displays what your temperature should be at, and this is the current temperature. Uh, so this is reading off of your thermocouple. This is reading what you set your PID controller to. There's some other things in here on the PID controller for alarms. Obviously, I didn't use an alarm. It'd be too annoying having a buzzer going off when your pot's not up to temp when you drop sprue cuttings or ingots in there. So I just forewent the, the buzzer. Don't need it. Uh, so really, that's about it. Uh, PID build. Basic. Easy cut and dry for the, the simple man who's non-electrician. So leave some comments. Keep tuning in and let me know if you got any questions.